probably are watching this video if you've seen my last film photography video because it kind of blew up and I'm kind of surprised, I'm not gonna lie. But after I posted that video, I have been getting a ton of questions about film photography, specifically point and shoots. So that's what this video is gonna be about. I have been preaching point and shoot cameras forever because one, they're less expensive, two, they're better for the environment, and I don't know, they just look cooler. So this video is gonna be focused all on that, how to save money on film, basically everything you need to know about point and shoot film photography. So I have a list of notes on my phone, a whole bunch of math on how to save money on this, but if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe. I will post more videos about film photography since you guys seem to be liking them and I'm also doing vlogmas right now. I'm doing like little weekly videos. Make sure to watch those videos also. If you haven't seen my last video about all the different types of film photography, I will link that down below or wherever. Also in the description of this video, you can find my blog post where I have linked a ton of affordable camera options because I didn't realize how much point and shoot cameras have become since I started. Um, when I went on Etsy, and looked up the price of the camera I have it was like over a hundred dollars which is insane so I have linked a ton of options between 15 and 35 dollars so make sure to go check out the link to my blog before all of those sell out because I know you guys have been looking for camera options first things first is how much you're saving shooting film on a point and shoot rather than disposable on Amazon a three pack of disposable cameras is $50 and there's 24 photos per camera so that's 69 cents per photo in a disposable camera but a pack of two rolls of film on Amazon is $17.50 and if each roll has 24 pictures in it that's 36 cents a photo so half the price of a disposable camera. The best deal I found for film is on Urban Outfitters. It's $22 for three rolls of 36 photos and that's 20 cents per picture. So obviously saving a lot of money. Also, I recommend buying film that has more photos per roll. So when you're developing each roll, you're saving more money, if that makes sense. Next is where to buy cameras. I got this one. This is the Minolta Freedom Zoom 150. I talked about this in my last video. These are kind of going for a lot now on Etsy, but as I said before, I created a blog post and linked a ton of different affordable options for point and shoot cameras. Um, this is just the one that I have. I like it because it's really small and has the strap, so I can just wear it like this. I would look on Depop and just like make the price range as low or as high as you want it. Etsy definitely has a lot. If you're lucky, some thrift stores or like flea markets definitely have. I know the Melrose Trading Post usually has a booth with point and shoot and all different types of film cameras. Or ask your parents if they have. My parents had this one. It's the Nikon 35Ti. I don't use it very often just because it's kind of like clunky and I think this is more of a expensive camera so I don't like to carry it around mm, but it's definitely fancier like the top has all these fancy dials but something simple like this is literally all you need Depop, Etsy, and ask your parents or like flea markets as for film most of these cameras are 35 millimeters so the rolls look like this and I recommend buying an ISO 400 roll of film just because that's like a it's pretty neutral for like any type of lighting setting um, and that's what I learned on. This is the Kodak Ultramax ISO 400. I found this at my local Walgreens and it was $22 for three rolls so it's a pretty good deal. I will also be linking a ton of film options in my blog post. These Kodak Ultramaxes are good. The Fuji ones are pretty good. But yeah, I would just say make sure it's 35 millimeters and around ISO 400. Now I'm going to show you how to load a camera because it can get a little confusing, especially if you do it wrong. So usually there's a little tab to open the camera. This one is next to the door. So this has just a little flap and you twist it to open it and it should look like this. On this Minolta, the button is here and you just pull it down and it opens. Someone asked in the last video if you have to load it in the dark. 
you don't have to load it in the dark you just have to make sure you don't open the flap while there's film inside i have done that multiple times or my friend has done it by accident and the pictures actually turned out fine um we might have lost a few but just don't do it your the inside of your camera has two sides this side is for the roll and then this side is for like where the film goes and then takes your picture here so your roll of film should come with a little piece of film sticking out like this and you're going to make sure that obviously this is the top and there's like kind of a little hole in the bottom here so you make sure it goes into that little thing and then you want the film to lay flat like this and you pull a little tab so that the little cut piece is in here usually you don't really have to do anything with this just make sure it's in this side i would just pull a little extra just to be safe and then you just close the back and it should make a sound that it's loading also your camera should be on so i'm going to close the back okay and it should make that sound and then it probably should be good to go Sometimes on this camera, it starts blinking on the top, like usually a number one should show up if it loads correctly, but if it doesn't load correctly and it won't let you take pictures, then I would just open the back. The end of the film usually didn't get caught in the little winder thing, so I would just open it and do it again because that has happened to me so many times. Yeah, and then you just shoot away. Once you've reached the end of the roll, well, most likely wind itself back into the little canister these have 24 so once you've reached 24 the camera will know and you'll hear it start making these noises and that's just it winding it back into itself so wait until the noises are over and then open your camera up and then your roll should end up looking like this with no little tab on the end as for development i talked about this in my last video but i would say i personally don't recommend cvs or walgreens because the way they develop leaves this tint on your pictures that I'm not necessarily a fan of and they take a lot longer than the darkroom or like a local film development store. I use the darkroom, which I've said in the past. They're great. They usually take like five days. They're uploaded on to like a cloud for you to just download your pictures and they send you back your negatives. I've heard of like local development stores getting your pictures back to you within like a few hours, which is crazy. Okay, now I'm gonna go through my last video and answer any questions that are in the comments because I got a lot of questions. Also, I got a lot of questions about this 3D camera. I will link it below. It was a little expensive, but very cool. This camera isn't automatic. This is basically just the camera. The battery is only for the flash. So you have to wind it yourself when the roll of film is done. Once you fill up your roll of film, you basically just take this part and wind it backwards until, I guess until you don't really feel any tension anymore. This is more like a manual camera in that sense, but it's also automatic. Uh, one of the questions I got was, do you have to change the rolls of film in the dark? No, you don't. When you put the film in a point and shoot, it'll pull the film until the exposed parts of the film are like not showing anymore. So it starts at like a blank film that hasn't been exposed to light. Yes, I get my film for the 3D camera developed at the darkroom also, and they're great because they crop all of the images into the half squares for you. And it's the same development process, it's just two pictures per one square. Okay, I think that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something. Make sure to check out my blog post for the links to affordable camera options and the film that I use. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions or want to see another video about film photography, let me know in the comments. But I think that's it. Bye.